Hello and welcome to this HRD Connect podcast. I am delighted to introduce Sally Hunter, Senior Vice President from Cielo. Sally Hunter is joining us today to share her expertise on Britain's skills shortage. Is it as bad as it seems? Welcome, Sally. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Is there actually a skills shortage in the UK? Um, there certainly is, and actually it's Europe-wide. Um, and I just want to clarify skill shortage in relation to internal versus external. So there is both the recognition that internally within um, organisations that they have a lack of the right skills within their existing employees. Um, so for example, uh, PwC estimates a third of companies have identified a shortage of suitably skilled employees as a barrier to growth. So that's the, the challenge of organisations internally and then externally it's the availability of those skills in the open marketplace. Um, and there's a recognition that um, a large proportion of organisations see that as their top challenge. So we recently conducted a survey across 400 HR execs, C-level executives, and that was seven countries, but predominantly UK. Um, 42% of them considered that hiring those niche skills was their biggest challenge that they were facing. And the, the next closest answer was probably about 20%. So it really is considered to be the biggest priority for organisations. Um, when you look at some of the external data, what we're also seeing is that some of those are not paying the right money, not offering the right benefits, not wanting to recruit an attractive location. Um, but there also are those that are correctly targeting all those areas and still seeing a, a significant gap in skills in the marketplace. And what is the skills gap ecosystem? So it's really our way of describing all the moments that matter uh, when addressing a skill shortage. Uh, so it's an opportunity to look at everything that impacts on whether we think there is a shortage and how we go about supporting it. And that starts right from workforce planning. So how does an organisation assess the right business outcomes and therefore the resource and skills that they're going to need to deliver it through to and where are they looking for those skills? So are their locations matched to where the talent actually is? Um, to what degree are they looking at educational backgrounds? So is there available fresh talent, fresh out of university versus those that are more experienced hires? Through to are they offering intelligent working? Is it flexible? Um, are they recognizing the needs of today's employees and what they're looking for? Um, is their culture and environment the, the kind of place that someone would want to work? You know, how respected and admired is their employer brand? Um, and what can they do to address that in a market that's got a challenge with available skills? Uh, and then how they communicate that. So what they're doing from a marketing and attraction perspective to really set themselves apart from their competitors. And then fundamentally being able to bring people in and onboard them and train them appropriately uh, and giving them that support. Because what we're seeing is that um, in many cases, then it's necessary to recruit someone who perhaps has less experience but has the right capabilities to do the job. So how are we training them to bridge the gap if we can't necessarily find enough experienced talent in the marketplace? How can you identify skills gaps and plan to ensure these don't become a problem? There's, a, there's two scenarios here and it comes back to that internal external. So workforce planning starts with looking at your existing employees. So it's assessing your five-year business plan and then understanding in your current workforce if you have the skills and capabilities to deliver that plan. Um, and so if you can get ahead of that and, and recognizing your own internal landscape, that allows you to plan forward then for what you would need to recruit externally or how you can develop people internally. So a big factor in that workforce plan and assessing your current workforce is are there roles that there are individuals that are 70, 75% qualified for that actually the investment in training those individuals and backfilling their role because it's more richly available, is that going to help you bridge the gap versus continually looking to the external marketplace to hire for some of these, these niche skill sets that we know are going to be more challenging in the marketplace? And then externally, it's really about taking that workforce plan, recognizing where the gaps are, and then understanding where the talent is. Um, so that geography piece is really important to be able to recognize when you look at developing your business to deliver business outcomes where the talent actually is and whether you are in a position to tap into that talent. And that can be delivered in two ways. One, 
through being where the talent is or secondly being able to track the talent to move and recognizing that you need to invest and fund in order to support someone relocating and that's becoming a much bigger part of an organization's workforce plan is recognizing talent might need to move and actually what does that do to your timelines so that identifying and dealing with the problem is all about time and and getting ahead of the plan to be able to recognize when you need to engage with talent to, for them to be in role in, a, in, a, in your business to impact on those outcomes moving forward. Um, so it is many organizations really struggle with even just short-term forecasting and demand planning, but that will be the key to being able to get ahead of that and look at your learning and development budget as well as your recruitment budget to understand how you can then get ahead of that and support it. How can partnering with an RPO help to alleviate the perceived skills gaps problem? So when you look at an RPO and actually working with an external partner and all they do is recruitment, um, what you're then tapping into is a level of investment and insight that it's difficult for any in-house recruitment team to deliver. So that data and insight is critical to being able to manage the skill gap because then you understand the number of roles advertised at any particular time in any geography that are for a particular niche skill set. Um, you can then understand across the portfolio within that RPO partner um, what challenges they're seeing with particular skill sets and roles. Um, so, for example, we know that healthcare, IT, engineering and teaching are critical in terms of skills gaps across Europe. Um, and that's from our existing client base, but also from the broader data that we have access to. So, that partnership really allows you to deal in fact as to um, where the available talent is and how to attract them. Um, I think and, and the significant area of, of, of leverage is around scale. So any in-house recruitment team will often be over or understaffed depending on what the demand is. And one of the first things that slips in that scenario is being able to really pipeline for the future. So to look at the long-term plan and pipeline and engage with, with talent in relation to the, to the roles that you're going to need to fill in 12 months' time. So an RPO partner can really step in, start doing that engagement and pipelining um, and leverage more shared and, and scalable teams to actually go out and start generating content, having conversations with future talent, um, and engaging them with the brand and starting to um, help them see what the opportunity might look like for them if they were to make a move going forward. So they're the two key areas. And finally, what would be your top tips for organisations who are struggling to find the correct skills? The absolute first thing is to engage the business. So, so often you feel um, that this is an HR challenge. And I think the business level that at HR is to say, where, where are the people that I need? You know, you have to solve it. And actually, the business has to take some real accountability for the way they forward plan, how they're going to deliver the business outcomes and what resource they need. So it's really getting the business to, at the highest level, engage that this is a challenge that we're all facing into because some of those individuals and in any business will be advocates, they'll be well-known in the industry and their voice needs to be heard in terms of how the message to market happens in relation to getting this talent through the door. Um, the other the key thing to do is address the ecosystem to really understand um, exactly how you're positioned in the marketplace and recognize what good looks like for, the, for the, the generation or the skill or the capability that you're looking for. So being realistic and pragmatic about where you are and if it's an attractive location, recognizing that you do need to address compensation and benefits. So it's being able to budget accordingly for how niche that talent is and their level of availability and recognize that that investment is it's far more prudent to sign sign off on that early on and to make sure that's part of your business plan versus trying to address that later um, when talent isn't necessarily responding to that market requirement um, and they're really the key areas i think lastly i'd mention um, training and onboarding so recognizing that there is a huge opportunity with the right training and development to bring people into the organization who are 70% to 80% qualified. Um, and that is a, is a huge advantage in terms of the compensation and benefits. So can you be in a position where you wouldn't necessarily have to pay a premium, but also you're offering the opportunity to develop, to build out their career um, and really start to engage them in the organization as a long-term employer for them.
Thank you very much for joining us today, Sally. It was fantastic to have you with us. Cielo, along with a multitude of other thought leaders, will be joining us at HRD UK Summit this year. To see more content from them, please visit our website at www.hrdsummit.com.